Hi, here's Daniel Thai, and I just wanted to make a short tutorial about designing an algorithm which uses um, four INO first inputs in order to mitigate risk and create um, an actually usable systematic trading strategy. So the input methods um, I take are from INO first using what is the um, top 10 plus S&P forecast and the code is designed in C sharp and quant connect. Now we can see actually the equity line of the strategy over here um, ending in the total return um, so this is an annual return of 47 percent and the sharper ratio of 1.83 you can actually get it higher or lower um, depending on the stop loss you set up and on the um, basically the price at which you set your limit orders but then you're a little bit curve fitting uh, but on average this strategy has about a sharper ratio of 2 with a relatively low drawdown of 7.7% and the way I did it um, you can see here that uh, the algorithm actually uses seven time events um, at first it tries to close the previous day positions at a good price um, from 9.31 to 9.55 if this doesn't work it actually adjusts the position price um, to the average price and if everything fails it closes it um, at 10.10 at market price now we take the new inputs of the day at 10.11 and try open them at a very good price um, bidding below the average for a long and uh, above the average for a short we then um, update the position at 10.45 if nothing has changed and finally at 11 we buy at market price if we weren't able to fill um, the order and we have a stop loss that's running um, it should be actually from 11 um, which basically checks if the price drops below a certain point um, it will sell the order at market price so basically close the position now this algorithm is scalable so I put here as the input for four um, assets a day and you can see here that my input data function um, uses arrays for everything meaning you could basically scale it to any point that you want you can run a portfolio of 10 stocks a day if you so wish um, but of course as you increase the number of stocks you're also gonna decrease your return uh, because the first second third picks are the best picks and anything after that is going to have a lower signal in terms of your input. Now, um, in this case, I'm going to show I'm only running equities, but you could uh, divide it into various markets. So, for example, I also have forex here, and uh, the multiple is the percent of the portfolio, which right now is at 100% to equities. You can see here my up cap and down cap, which is representative of. Um, basically where I'm trying to get in at the price so if I have a, a long position I'm going to bid 99% of the average price so I'm going to try to get it 1% below the average um, this one is what is called try open then I update later um, at 100% of the average and later I'm buying at market um, and of course have different variables for you can run differently on forts of course it's, your uh, movements are much smaller you're gonna have to work with ticks so you have to lower those numbers now we can set here the test period so because my input data is for the year I'm testing from 2014 to 15 loading all of the information here so you can see it's a very large universe of tickers um, and basically we pick a different ticker every day to trade most tickers are held uh, a maximum of one to two days um, we load the data and we can see here the function that checks for short and long positions if our current stop loss triggers um, from there we jump into building the new data sets of the day um, and you can see here I'm calling my functions so uh, again first I try close at this first time then I update my close then I force to close then I try open new positions at a good price, update those positions and finally 
force open these new positions. Um, and you can see I have a variable here one time which basically makes sure that uh, using a one increment every function is only called once per day. And here's just the functions themselves. You can see I'm actually using um, an input array of orders. This is uh, basically you're setting up limit orders and you can adjust these orders. So if you're just using um, by functions that are by default you cannot update them later or at least it's much more difficult but if you use limit order arrays then you can basically call your orders and define new prices, adjust them. Um, this is quite an easy way of doing it. And basically you can see here that when I'm finally using the force open I'm actually using um, another function here which is called trade input market uh, which basically sets my holding to 25 percent of my portfolio times my multiple and basically yeah, if you run this algorithm you will get the following results so you can see there's not much drawdown there are however periods of uh, quite long stable growth um, with periods where the algorithm really does perform very well you can see that here of course this portfolio is unleveraged you could also leverage it and what is quite neat about uh, Quant Connect, you can set up your trading fees right now we're using one dollar trading model uh, realistically you could use a much higher one which is the interactive brokers model uh, which would bring up the fees here though to I think nearly a 70 or 80,000 and of course you can also see your trades so you can see all the trades that executed on any given day um, which is quite neat as well and we can see here um, for example just going through it shortly that on the first there are only two trades um, so 50% of the cash was allocated 25% to each and they were those were limit orders and again when your limit order actually doesn't fill um, as happened here with RBS we can see that at 11 um, it actually executed the market order and filled at the market price and this doesn't happen often which is the way we want it to be um, so that's it so if you have any questions you can write to support at inofirst.com and of course we can you can adjust this concept to basically any signals universe that company provides.